Let's talk about terraforming Mars. So how do we make the atmosphere of an entire planet larger? And if we do so, how do we make it human friendly? Lastly, is there a way that we can do that with modern day technology, whether it be nuclear warheads or giant mirrors? I don't know. Let's talk about that. So to begin, as we mentioned in the last episode, in order to terraform Mars in a way that humans could survive on the surface without needing a mask or a suit, you would have to drastically increase the pressure that the atmosphere has at the surface. One major way of doing this would be having to melt the ice caps or the ice that's underneath the surface to be able to release that carbon dioxide into the atmosphere to just raise the pressure. Now, how do we exactly do that? Using something called the greenhouse effect. So what is the greenhouse effect and how does it work? Imagine you're sitting in a cold room, you're shivering, you have only a t-shirt on and shorts, and you want to add maybe a jacket or some long pants. Well, that's kind of how a planet has an atmosphere. By adding an atmosphere to a planet, it tries to hold in that heat just a little bit more to make it warmer, similar to how you would put a jacket on to keep yourself warm. Now, there are different molecules in an atmosphere that would keep you warmer, similar to how there's different pieces of clothing that you'd wear to keep you warmer. So let's discuss some of the science behind the greenhouse effect before we get into some terraforming options. So if you look at it here on Earth, you have light from the sun come through the atmosphere. Now when it goes through the atmosphere, some of the molecules actually pick up the energy or the radiation that comes from the sun. So it holds that heat. Now the rest of the, heat, the, rest of the radiation comes down to the ground. After it bounces off the surface of Earth, some of it's collected by the surface and then some of it is reflected back off into space through the atmosphere. But there's still that little part we talked about at the beginning, the part that's collected by the molecules in the atmosphere. That itself is the greenhouse effect because that energy that's stored in those little tiny molecules all throughout the atmosphere is actually what's keeping the planet a little bit warmer. It's keeping that warm coat around us so that we aren't freezing all the time. It's theorized by scientists at NASA that if we did not have an atmosphere similar to maybe the moon, our average temperature on the surface of Earth would be about zero degrees Fahrenheit. Now with an atmosphere, our average temperature is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So how exactly do we do this on Mars? The Martian atmosphere is much smaller than ours, but we want to be able to raise the temperature enough in order to get some of those carbon dioxide molecules out of the ice form and into gas. Now it's actually pretty interesting. One of the first options is sending a thermonuclear warhead to Mars. And if we explode it on the ice caps, it would definitely heat it up and it would definitely melt a lot and it would expend it out into the atmosphere. Another option is using something called chlorofluorine carbon molecules, which are actually banned on Earth because of how much of an effect they have as a greenhouse gas. Now, these chlorofluorocarbons could either be sent in terms of rockets or we could try and mine them on Mars and just eject them into the atmosphere to try and raise that temperature. Some other options that I'd be considered are taking comets and small planets from the outer solar system that have ammonia on it, because ammonia is a little bit safer of a greenhouse gas, however it's not as effective as those chlorofluorocarbons. So if we were able to redirect those comets or a planet, small planet, into an orbit or into a collision course with Mars, we'd be able to add a lot more of gaseous atmosphere because those are pretty large objects. There's also a couple ways where we could vent methane from the surface. So if we sent some crafts there or we sent machines there, we'd be able to just exhaust methane or carbon dioxide, similar to how machines and factories do here on Earth. There has been an option to take a giant mirror from space that redirects sunlight and focus it on the polar ice caps, which would make it slowly melt over time. Another option is if we can put dust on the surface, depending on where we wanted it to, it would change something that's called the albedo, which is similar to the reflectivity of a planet, and it would make it hold a lot more heat. Now this is kind of similar, another analogy, is if you're wearing a white shirt versus a black shirt on a really hot summer day, the white shirt wouldn't hold as much energy as a black shirt would. So in terms, if you had a darker shirt on, you'd be hotter. So if we can make the surface of Mars dar darker, it would actually hold in a lot more heat. So what are some of the challenges that come up with the things that I had just mentioned? Well, the first major challenge is redirecting a comet or a planet into Mars. Now, why is that an issue? Well, 
If we have a colonization on Mars and we want to redirect a comet or a rather large celestial body, that could be really troubling because we could not only impact our civilization that already exists there, but also it could disrupt a lot of different functionality or activity or volcanic activity on Mars so that people would end up having a pretty hard time or a pretty dusty experience while on there. Next challenge is in terms of mi mining fluorine or ejecting methane, that means that you have to have a sustainable civilization already on Mars because you have to have these machines running and you have to be able to mine exactly where you need to mine, which is not something that would be capable for just a robotic mission. Now, the actual most capable one is the first one we mentioned, the thermonuclear warhead, which sounds rather strange, but if you just send something that we already have and blow up the polar ice caps, then you will release a lot of heat and in turn get a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Now that could remain a problem, but if there isn't a civilization there yet, then it could actually be pretty safe. Another challenge, not necessarily in terms of capability, because we are able to make a mirror, but in order to redirect sunlight and burn at a rate that would make it terraform it in terms of our lifetime or the next few lifetimes, would actually require a mirror that's 62 miles in diameter. Not feet, not meters, but miles, which is a pretty large mirror. Now with our current manufacturing capabilities, that's most likely improbable. I would actually say that it is impossible. However, in the future, if there is manufacturing in space, it would be a lot easier to manufacture something that large because you wouldn't have to launch it. You would just have to make it in space where you need it. So in this episode, we were able to talk about a wide variety of things. We discussed the greenhouse effect, the science behind it, and a quick analogy of how it works. We discussed a few ways to actually increase the Martian atmosphere in terms of adding molecules, redirecting sunlight, and also just changing the surface itself. Now, the most effective way actually turned out to be a nu thermonuclear warhead. However, I would imagine if we wanted to send one to Mars, people wouldn't be really happy about sending a nuke. We also discussed some of the other challenges that come into play, but there's still one overarching problem, and that is there isn't a magnetosphere. There's nothing protecting Mars from losing its atmosphere, as we learned in the episode about MAVEN. So in the next episode, we're going to talk about how do we make a magnetosphere around Mars? How do we protect it so that its atmosphere isn't blown away anymore? Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.